Welcome back. So in the last video, we looked at the product rule. Well, now let's look at the quotient rule. So instead of having a product of two functions, now you have some sort of quotient or division of two functions. So you can't <laughs> just do the derivative of the numerator and then stick it over the derivative of the denominator and call it a day. That's not what the rule says. So let's look at, a, look at what it does say. So first of all, f and g have to be differentiable functions. So the derivative of f over g is going to equal uh, f prime of g, or sorry, f prime of x times g. So the derivative of the top times the bottom, and then minus, and then it switches. So the derivative of the bottom times the top, and then it's over the original denominator squared, provided that that derivative of the denominator um, is not equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, so here's the quotient rule. Um, between the two rules, between the product and the quotient, uh, I like the, the product rule a little bit better just because I don't end up with a fraction most of the time. Um, but, you know, it's still a rule, so it's not too hard to follow. It's just you've got a, um, you've got a quotient uh, as a result. Okay, so some people don't like this and how it stands. Just, they just, for whatever reason, it just confuses them and they can't, and they can never remember the quotient rule. The product rule, oddly enough, most people can remember that one. It's the quotient rule that's like, wait, what did it say? Even though they are really similar. So the product rule just doesn't have a denominator and it's a plus. So if this is a little bit tricky for you to, to memorize or to remember, you can also use the same. So it says a low d high. So the low times the derivative of the high, which is right here. So the low times the derivative of the high minus high d low. So the high times the derivative of the low. Square the bottom. And there you go. So all you Disney fans out there, kind of sounds like the um, Seven Dwarves. Low D high minus high D low. Square the bottom and there you go. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So find the derivative of each function. So the, the quotient rule, um, you know, it really kind of helps or does kind of delineate stuff out. It's a little bit easier to recognize because there's an obvious high and an obvious low or obvious top and an obvious bottom. So the denominator, that's the G. The numerator, that's the F or the high. So let's follow this out. <clears throat> okay, so this one, example A, I'm gonna follow just out what the formula says. Example B, I'll use the same so you can see how they both go. And then you can pick whichever one you like the best. Okay, so F prime, so the derivative of the top, the negative sign times the bottom and then minus, now it's gonna switch. So the derivative of the, the bottom, so that would be one times the top, just times cosine. And then all over, now take your denominator, the original denominator and square it. So just x squared. And this one, <clears throat> whoops, wow, can't believe I did that. That shouldn't be a G, that should be an X. <clears throat> so this one, we just gotta clean it up. So negative X sine X 
minus cosine of x all over x squared. <clears throat> okay, so that's how the formula goes. So now let's try the second one and use the saying. <clears throat> Personally, I go with this one, but that's just how I was taught. You know, I don't care which one it is. If you go off of this, if you go off the saying, if you've got another way to remember it, you know, go for it. All I care about is whether or not you can actually find the derivative of a quotient and get the right answer. <laughs> All right. Um, so with this one, there's the high and here's the low. Big old fraction bar in there. All right, so the saying says the low. So I'm gonna write the low, which is x squared plus five x times the derivative of the high, which would be three. Minus, now let's switch it. So the high times the derivative of the low, which in this case would be 2x plus 5. So square the bottom and there you go. So here's the bottom or the low. x squared plus 5x quantity squared. Okay, so this way you've got to clean up for sure. So here, if I actually do distribute and FOIL, uh, I am going to end up with like terms that I can combine. So 3x squared plus 15x. And then if I, just, uh, if I FOIL and apply the negative, minus 6x squared minus 13x, 13x uh, plus 5. And the denominator, I'm just going to leave it alone. Denominators, you don't really foil out. Denominators, you can pretty much just leave them the way they are. Uh, unless something's going to simplify, then you might have to factor it more. Uh, but let's see if that's going to happen. So like in the denominator, I've got an x that's common, so I could pull it out if I wanted to and also square it. Um, but I might not need to if there's no like x that's common on the top. Okay, so let's... Uh, add up which we can. So negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 over x squared plus 5x quantity squared. Uh, and if you wanted to, uh, if, like, if you're not sure if anything's going to cancel, you know, when in doubt, factor out. So if you factor the top, like you could pull out a negative and then factor the rest, it would be 3x minus 5 times an x plus 1 all over x squared plus 5x quantity squared. So nothing's going to cancel. Uh, so if you can see that, if you kind of factor it in your head and go, oh, nothing's going to cancel, you can totally leave this as your answer. Otherwise, if you need to factor it and then tell, you know, you can totally write that as your answer. Just be aware that both of them are acceptable. So in a multiple choice question, if I say, hey, what's the derivative of this fun function? And I have the factored version instead of this, then you're gonna wanna choose that, which means you've got a factor. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and stop the video here and we'll do the next two examples in that one.